Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm going to answer a question that I have a real struggle answering, and that is, how do you come up with a quantitative finance master's research project? So the reason this is so challenging for me to come up with, and I think for professors to come up with, and industry practitioners to come up with, and especially yourselves being a student, for you to come up with, is that there's not really enough time in a master's to do fundamental academic research. And that's going to be the first main problem here. So trying to realize this when you pick a topic, a master's degree, whether it's a year to two years, it's not enough time to research anything in great depth, come up with some sort of great fundamental groundbreaking research. So just understand that. Like right off the bat, you're going to do something simple, some little tiny project. Um, it's going to be something that other people have already done, but you want to come at it from a slightly different angle, something a little interesting and more realistically, you want to come at it just showing people like, hey, I have an interest in this topic. And because I have an interest in this topic, um, I built some models for this. And this is what I came up with. So again, scale it back, keep it simple, realize it's not going to be academic research. Um, I wouldn't worry about publishing anywhere. I don't know, some master's programs might think they can, but no. Um, that's the first piece. The second piece is going to be selecting a topic and this is kind of the main core piece here, which is you need to find something that actually interests you that you want to do for a job after grad school. So a lot of students ask me, Dreacher, you're like, what is like the hardest problem in quant finance right now? Or what are the journals that you read? To be honest, I don't read journals. Um, I just don't. And I don't follow the industry as a whole. And the reason being is that most quants have their heads down working at some sort of job and they're busy doing actual research or, you know, building models for a very specific problem at a very specific firm. So now you might ask, so aren't you reading all these journals? And well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Most of the time it's like, I have a problem, I have data, I have all the tools in my tool belt, right? I've taken a master's program, I've worked in the industry for years, I've read papers over the years, I still read a ton of textbooks as many of you know. And so I'm always kind of having new tools in the back of my mind and I use these tools to solve problems. What I don't look for is I don't go out and say, oh, okay, what is, you know, this, what's the best way to model this? And then I find some sort of model online and I plug my data into the model and see if it works. It's not really how it works. Um, quant finance in a whole, and I'd argue the difference between quantitative finance and traditional finance is that quantitative finance does not have closed form solutions for the most part. Like even the Black-Scholes model in practice, we don't use the closed form solution. Uh, we break the assumptions because they're not realistic. We come back and say, hey, we need to fix this, that, and the other. And by doing that, um, you need to use like numerical methods and things to actually find challenging, I'll put air quotes, solutions, but they're not really solutions. They're approximations to things. So quant finance as a whole, we're just looking to apply the tools of math, science, math, statistics, computer science um, to these financial problems. And as the data changes and moves and things kind of happen in markets and you know structures change, we end up coming up with new models and new methodologies. It's just how quant finance works. So humans, which is what we're really modeling in finance, um, aren't always logical and things move around and they change and bounce and there's new trends and things. And so you have to consider these into a model here. So what I would do for a project here is I'd find something that just really interests you. Like what is your dream job? Answer that question for me first, okay? Then go back and say, okay, what are the problems that this industry is trying to solve? So if you want to do like wealth management, for example, you could think about, okay, asset allocation. How do you do asset allocation? Uh, just go online, go to Google, search, start looking at papers, start looking at the textbooks that you've done and start trying to figure out, okay, these are the common methods that are being used. One of the big hot areas right now is machine learning. So you might say, okay, I learned how to do portfolio asset allocation. Maybe you're thinking like the efficient frontier or something and you want to code it in Python and that's fine. But you're thinking, okay, how can I use machine learning to do asset allocation? Okay, so start using the tools and things that you've learned in school. Pick up like a little bit of machine learning or stats that you probably learned in a different class and try to take the two classes and put them together. Now, another area is, let's say you're super excited about trading. Maybe you do something like on cryptocurrency trading. So you go out, find some cryptocurrency data, and then you go out there and you say, okay, I'm going to see how to create some sort of stats arbitrage model. Or I'm gonna create a factor investing style model and I'm gonna use cryptocurrencies and I'm gonna go find this data and that data. I'm gonna put it together and I'm gonna do some sort of model with it. And then I'm gonna write a paper on that model. These are all easily doable things for a master's research paper. It's interesting for employers because they say, okay, either one, we've never used that machine learning method 
which is over here, with this sort of problem. And often it's just because we don't have time. Um, the other thing is you might end up doing some research, which I've already seen and has already been done a thousand times over. But if you do it in my area, I'm gonna say, oh, okay. They've struggled with our sort of problems that we deal with on a daily basis. They've looked at the tools that we normally do and they actually try to build a model for this. So they made an attempt at building something that we've already done. So give you an example here with credit scorecard modeling. That's where I work on the sell side of banking. We build credit scorecards, which I hardly ever see research on or classes in Quant Masters. And yet when I see someone has like a side project on credit scorecards, right? It's simple, it's easy, it's probability of default, it's a loss given default, and it's exposure at default, and they put it all together. Even just doing that simple process and even just following the textbooks and even just doing something simple with like Kaggle data, I at least go, okay, great. They have a little bit of the lingo down. They have, you know, they've cut their teeth a little bit as they say, like you've learned a little bit of like the struggles and the problems with the data. You've kind of used the methods that we typically use. You maybe tried something new and you just wrote a paper on that. That's what I would do. I really want to see a research topic that's something that interests you. What I don't want to see is you go out and say, okay, Dimitri said credit scorecard models. I did a paper on credit scorecard models and my dream job is to go out and work at, I don't know, wealth management or to work as a algo trader on optimizing, you know, algorithms for algorithmic trading. Again, if they're not related, it's not going to matter. So to debunk something too here at the end, there is no like fundamental groundbreaking problem in quant finance that like, oh, if someone could solve this, you would be a genius. Um, if there is one of these problems out there, there are some problems similar to this. Like you're not going to be able to solve it in a very, very short amount of time and even write a paper on it in that short amount of time here. So those are kind of things to think about here. Pick something that interests you because you want employers to actually hire you to do the similar thing. Um, look for simple solutions. Just apply like new models to different types of problems. And finally, I'm going to talk about a few hurdles here to think about as you're wanting to do research. Getting data is extremely challenging and this will limit what you can and can't do. And this is part of the fundamental, I guess, discussion here of my, you know, why it's such a challenging problem. I do solve problems at work and I've even created a new methodology for a statistical model in a very, very niche specific specification of like, you have to have a very specific problem and it has to be structured in a very specific way. And yet I've never written a paper on it. But the difference is I have the data for this. I had an actual real world problem on this. I'd seen this similar problem in data structure in a few different spots, again, at banks, but it's their data. So like I can't even use that data to write and publish a paper. Now I can write a paper on the general theory of the modeling itself, but again, I can't get that data. And I know a few universities have talked to me and they're frustrated, they're mad because they have students who need to do research projects or papers or internships, and yet they can't get the data from these banks or trading firms or institutions to actually do the research on. So data is going to be your biggest hurdle here. You need to find a problem that's interesting, that's short, that's sweet, that's in your area of interest that you can actually find data on. I would search on Kaggle. So again, this isn't really solid advice for academic research. We would never accept <laughs> data from Kaggle for a research problem. There might be a few fields that might, but um, in general though, no, you're not gonna get great stellar data. Now, trying to find good data is extremely challenging. And often like banks, for example, when we purchase data from like credit bureaus, we spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to get data. So we're not just gonna give it up and you're not gonna be able to get millions and millions of dollars to get data. So look for sources, start on Kaggle, um, look at stock pricing data. Uh, also look at like Bitcoin or like, I don't know, the crypto world. There's more interesting things you can do in that side. Again, look at traditional problems, apply machine learning. Those are kind of good areas to start with. Things are a little bit new, but again, you can keep it fairly simple. Just find some data uh, and then maybe like traditionally they use logistic regression. Uh, try using a decision tree or a neural net or something different and then try to tie the two kind of ideas together and then write a paper on that. So I really wish I had like some stellar advice for you guys like, oh, this is like the most groundbreaking journal and this is like topics you can find and things you can do. But unfortunately, most of us are just super busy with our heads down with proprietary data, solving problems. And often most of these problems we can solve with the tools we have. We're not looking for breadths of information or different papers that have been published. And yes, I do read papers occasionally, but to be honest with you guys, I find them just by Googling. Like I will Google, you know, like, I don't know, some specific problem, like, I don't know, like a biased data problem that we have on some specific type of credit data. And I think we should be using, you know, this methodology and it's not working. 
And then I have to dig through the math and the first principles on why it's not working. But I will also Google it because I know I can find online half the time papers on people who have tried different approaches. With that being said, that's not science. That's not rigor. Uh, you still have to read the papers, try to figure out if they actually have any value or meaning in them. So anybody can do research and anybody can publish a paper these days. And so trying to make sure you have good quality materials and then again, going through the ideas and processes and looking at the first principles is important to see if it's going to actually work in the real world. So anyways, I'm sorry, guys. I wish I had better advice for you on this, but those are my tips and tricks on finding a research topic. Again, you can even search like quant research topics and find all kinds of things out there available. If you don't, uh, do an informational interviews as well with alumni, like search people online on LinkedIn that have quant finance backgrounds. Say, hey, I'm interested in doing you know, trading and you work in trading. Would you mind talking a little bit about your job? Just learn as much as you can about it. Uh, and then you can kind of take those ideas, write notes down, Google some of that stuff, and then try to find like an inter interesting topic based on that. So anyways, thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.